Uh, in March, you said, quote, there is more than a circumstantial evidence that Trump aides colluded with Russia. In this email, one of those pieces of evidence, uh, is this email evidence to you or was this news to you? It, it, had you known anything about this email in the past? Uh, I can't comment on what's been presented to us, um, but obviously this warrants very thorough investigation. Um, and when you look at the timetable, this is a month before the Russians start dumping information they have, derogatory information about Secretary Clinton. So if that uh, report is correct, this email disclosed to the Trump campaign the truth that the Russian government had damaging information, that they wanted to help Donald, uh, elect Donald Trump. Uh, and it put uh, certainly the first family on notice uh, of all of these. Uh, it makes all the denials we've seen uh, since uh, that much more uh, unbelievable suspect. Uh, so certainly this bears a lot of investigation. Uh, these participants are all going to have to come before the committee. Uh, we're going to have to try to obtain uh, any relevant emails or documents. But uh, yet another, I think, uh, rather stunning public disclosure. Uh, you say stunning. Were you surprised by this disclosure? Well, uh, you know, certainly some elements uh, have been the shifting explanations by the Trump administration. First, there was we never had any kind of meetings like that. And then there was, OK, we did have a meeting, but it was about adoptions. Uh, but then, of course, Paul Manafort, the campaign manager, is there. Why would he come to a meeting about adoptions? Mm -hmm. uh, then it's about the Magnitsky Act, which is a sanctions legislation uh, that sanctions Russians who are engaged in human rights abuses. Uh, then we learn that, uh, well, actually, they were went hoping to get damaging information from uh, the Russians uh, about Hillary Clinton. So the explanations continue to shift. Uh, this has been the course not just for uh, Donald Jr., but for many in the Trump orbit. Uh, and all of it, I think, raises a, a lot of alarm bells for us. Caddy. So, Congressman, I, I want to ask you the question everyone is asking about this, and you may not know the answer to it, but is this collusion? Well, certainly if uh, the Trump campaign went to a meeting with the Russians seeking to enlist uh, or receive the help of the Russian government uh, in getting damaging Which information. Which is what the trail of evidence and emails suggests is the case. Yes, that would be a potential form of collusion, uh, that they are going to coordinate with the Russians the receipt, the dissemination of damaging information. Uh, again, this is still in the category of allegation that needs to be investigated. Uh, but here you have you know, very direct potential evidence of the Russians communicating with the campaign. We have stuff that will help your campaign. We want to help your father get elected. Mm. Um, so uh, yes, that's potential evidence. That Would goes it be on. illegal? Uh, it very well could be illegal. Now, clearly, if there was any kind of a quid pro quo, if they went to that meeting uh, and suggested, well, you don't have the goods in the meeting, but if you come forward with something, then we'll help you with the Magnitsky Act. That, of course, would be illegal. Uh, but if they were soliciting or receiving essentially an in-kind contribution from a foreign government in a U.S. election, that would violate, I think, any number of laws. Bianca. Congressman, this makes me think of a scenario that played out about six months ago with Sally Yates when she was alarmed at potential compromise uh, by the Russians against Michael Flynn when he knowingly lied about discussing sanctions with the Russian ambassador. Uh, what are the odds that you think the Russians could have been using this as compromise as well, knowing very well that this meeting did take place, though those within the Trump administration for months now have been denying any such meetings and said they'd never met with Russian officials? Well, this is why I think we have to really get to the bottom of just what happened. Uh, what instrumentalities did the Russians use to try to exert influence? Because the most critical thing is, do, do the Russians have any information that they can hold over the head of the administration to influence? influence U.S. policy. Uh, that could take the form of meetings they know took place, offers to give help they know took place. Uh, it could take the form of if they were engaged in money laundering with the Trump organization. I'm not saying this happened, but if it did, uh, obviously that is something that could hold over the president uh, and the first family. We need to find out, did any of this happen? Because if it did, it could very well shape why the president approaches Syria the way he does, why he approaches Ukraine the way he does, why he approaches sanctions the way he does, why he says the things he says about we don't really know where the Russians were involved. So obviously we need to get to the bottom of this. It would be the worst form of negligence for the Congress not to. Mike. So obviously uh, you're going to want to have Donald Trump Jr. testify before your committee. Yes. Un under oath. Yes. As part of the process, given what we know now publicly, where do you go as a prosecutor? 
or as a congressman on this committee, to get to intent? Well, you know, I think first we try to get whatever uh, materials that we don't already have in terms of documentation. Uh, then we bring in the witnesses who set up the meeting. Uh, clearly, there was an expectation on the Trump campaign, even from their own statements, that they were going to get some goods on Hillary Clinton. Uh, why was, if that report is correct, why was that email sent? Uh, if this lawyer, and, and I would take everything she has to say, obviously with a huge grain of salt, uh, we know that the Russians use sometimes private citizens, sometimes oligarchs or whatnot to do their business. They don't always use certified agents of the SVR. Uh, so we'll want to know what went into that. Uh, why did the person who sent that email believe that the Russians were trying to help uh, elect Donald Trump? What information did he believe that they had? Uh, there was clearly a, there's clearly a backstory here uh, that we need to get to the bottom of. So which, which, which leads to a second question that Caddy raised about uh, collusion. What what is the ultimate legal definition of collusion? Well, see, we, we've been using collusion uh, as a term to cover a lot of potentially yeah. problematic conduct. Um, there is no statute that uses that term or coordination, which is the term the FBI director more often used. The statute uh, would be conspiracy. Uh, if you conspire with others to violate any number of laws, it is a crime. So if there's a conspiracy to violate the election laws and get help from a foreign uh, power, uh, if there's a, uh, a, a consp conspiracy to engage in illegal uh, quid pro quo, uh, an act of bribery uh, where you will get help in exchange for a legislative change on the Magnitsky Act, obviously that would be problematic. Uh, if there's any conspiracy to uh, uh, obtain uh, illicit information uh, to steal the information. Any number of those things could be a violation of law. Uh, those are things uh, that Bob Mueller will be looking at for the purposes of do we bring a prosecution? But there are also things that Congress needs to look at in terms of what were the full range of actions taken by the Russians? Did they have the help of U.S. persons? And most important, how do we protect ourselves from this happening again? Uh, and if there is any leverage the Russians have over the president, we need to know about it. Yeah, especially given the sanctions bill. Where, where does it stand right now? Well, it has obviously overwhelming support in the Congress. I think this is true in both houses. Uh, the only issue is, will Paul Ryan uh, bring it up for a vote? Uh, what kind of pressure is the White House exerting to prevent that from happening? Uh, I would expect that the pressure will be irresistible and we'll, we'll uh, get to vote on it. But will we get to vote on the bill that came out of the Senate or will we vote on a watered down version? Uh, I think a lot of us Democrats and Republicans want to make sure that we get to vote on precisely what the Senate passed. And your and colleagues are on board with wanting in the house as well with wanting a tough sanctions bill uh, I think they certainly are uh, the, the question really Still. is not what the members want the question is what the leadership is willing to allow uh, and how much pressure they're under from the White House and yeah. congressman of all the people that were participating in this meeting one is currently tied to the administration Paul Manafort no longer a part of this team and obviously Don jr. a private citizen as well working with the Trump company uh, Jared Kushner, given what we now know, do you think that he should have a security clearance revoked? Well, certainly it doesn't appear that uh, a lot of the meetings that he participated in and the discussions that are uh, alleged to have taken place uh, weren't disclosed uh, during his uh, background check process. I would presume that from just the open source reporting. Uh, if that's the case, uh, then I think uh, he should have his security clearance um, reviewed and very likely revoked. Uh, you can't, I think, go into uh, any kind of discussions or submit documents about whether you have nationals and omit, for example, if it proved to be true, uh, a discussion of wanting to set up a secret back channel with a foreign adversarial power. So uh, if for anyone else, they would absolutely have their security clearance revoked. Uh, obviously, the agencies that are the holders of that clearance yeah. uh, are in a very difficult position. So Donald Trump Jr. just tweeted. And he says, uh, Congressman Schiff, media and Dems are extremely inv invested in the Russia story. If this nonsense meeting is all they have after a year, I understand the desperation. Is that all you have? 
Uh, well, there's an awful lot more that's even in the public domain. Um, but of course, the evolving accounts from Don Jr. don't inspire a lot of confidence. This is someone who was very adamant, never had any of these meetings, never had any kind of help or offers of help. This is preposterous. He was making the same argument before. Uh, of course, he's had to evolve his story many times since, and I'm sure will evolve it many times in the future. Uh, so I, I, 